Right. Okay, uh, call the meeting to order at 6.02 p.m. Uh, the first item of business is to approve the minutes of July 10th. I had a couple things, Cindy, for you. Um, okay. Yeah, on the minutes you said Wednesday, July 12th. I think it was Wednesday, July 10th, pretty sure. Yes, it was. Okay, so we need to change that. Oh, okay. And Hang on, we got George and Bob. Okay, good. Full house. All right, so I need to change. We're in the third line. Seven ten. Yep. And then uh, in the uh, item number one to review and vote to approve the minutes of June 12th, it's a little confusing where I mentioned that Ginger was asked about doing hybrid meetings. Result, I wanted to add, resulting in a few extra minutes of discussion. That's why, so it explains why we had two different um, votes to adjourn. Um, excuse okay. me, um, Bob, I'm, I'm just looking at my calendar. We met on July 10th. Right, not yeah. July 10th. Right. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, I thought I thought there was 11 being said. Okay. No. <clears throat> Did you get that, Cindy, my, my correction there? Yes, June uh, changed to July 10th, and then the, from, uh, um, resulting in a few extra minutes of discussion after yep. Ginger asked, inquired about hybrid. Great. Does anybody else have corrections, additions? You be careful. No. If nope. not, then I'll accept a motion to accept the minutes of the 10th of July as correct. Motion, motion to accept. The Is there a second? Second. Okay, here we go. Um, Fred. Yes. Deborah. Yes. Bob. Yes. George. Yes. And Ginger. Yes. Okay. And we move on. Financial report, Bob, I don't know. You probably haven't had a chance. I get that. I reached out to Jim um, and he and I were going to get together. Um, he asked that I wait for him to get back to me and I never heard from him. Okay. And I got busy in the last couple of days and haven't had a chance to reach out to him. So. My wife spoke with Katie today and um, Jim is doing better, much better. Good. Okay. I want you to know that. Good. Okay. So we'll, we'll, we'll hold on that. Um, Cindy, you just keep an eye peeled on that, uh, on our finances. And if you- So far, so good. Okay, great. Director's report, that would be you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So a few things or two things came up after I sent out my director's report. Um, did everyone notice that we ended fiscal year 24 on a zero balance? Yes. Which is, is good. Um, so you had asked me to um, report there's $750 left in our ARPA chimney slash window painting repair funds. Okay, so um, did we, we didn't apply that to anything else? That is what's left after all the invoices have been submitted for what Rich Cooper has done um, for the chimney and the original painting of the rotunda windows. So that's what's still remaining in those funds. And could we use those that seven hundred fifty dollars to offset the other amount that we were going to take out of state aid to pay um, for window painting? No, for for um, the brick ceiling. I don't see why we can't. Because it is brick repair. Yes. Well, didn't we? Didn't the town approve funds from a town meeting for brick repair work? No, the I guess they approved funds for the ceiling, and but not, not the actual brick repair. repair. Right. Okay. So in 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 our last meeting, didn't we vote to take to pay out of state aid? Yeah, thirty three seventy five for repairing and replacing the bricks. Um. Do you want to amend that number and use the 750? Okay, when I get back, I, yeah, will... I just I wondered if the what the trustees think. Are we so trying that... to run the money down? Are we trying to use all the money? Yeah. Oh, it's, then it's yeah. use it. It's use it or lose it, right? Oh, then right. use it. Yeah. Yeah. You lose it if you don't use it. 
so Cindy, is there a, an easy way for you to work with Dara to pay uh, the 3370, 3375 minus 750, do it with two from two lines? I just have to submit two different bill schedules and indicate where the funds are coming from. Okay. Is and there anything what, else for how about much? is there anything else about window painting or brick repair that we need to hold that money for? Weren't well, you going to have Bob Halla come and paint the trim? Uh, we got we got report on that coming later. Yeah, there's Okay. Issue. But again, it's yeah, it's use it or lose it. So if it if we use it on that, I think I think we're gonna spend that much money on painting the trim. Um, personally, if the money's sitting there in our account and we have a way to utilize that those funds that align with what the funds were intended for, right? I my sense is we take them. Um, again, we go back to what if, what if there was some type of event in town and everybody's budget got crunched, we could push the painting back another year. Okay. So Cindy, you're going to try to work that out, submit to two and see what Dara says. Yes. Okay. Works for me. Everybody good on that. Should we take yeah. a vote? Should we take a vote to, to amend our original plan to use the 3375 out of state aid? Yes, I think so. Okay, could someone make an appropriate motion to that effect? Move to use the 750 to offset the cost of the 3375. I I move that we use the $750 that's remaining for um what was it? The brick sealant? ARPA funds, electrical the ARPA funds. Um yeah. that we I move that we use the $750 remaining in the ARPA funds for the brick repairs that were done prior to the brick ceiling. Okay. Second. Is there, yes, Ginger? I will second. Oh, second. Okay. Oh, it's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? If not, we'll go to a roll call vote. Ginger? Yes. Deborah? Yes. Fred? Yes. Bob? Yes. And George? Yes. Okay. All right. Cindy, you were you were in the middle of your report. Oh, yes. Um, and then Amy LaValle is interested in becoming a substitute library associate. And I just need the board to say, yes, it's okay that she comes on board and gets trained to be a substitute. When does she have time? I don't know. She's a town clerk, right? Yes. Okay. Oh, that's it. I mean, I think that's great. Um, uh, okay. do, you, do you need a motion to that effect? Probably. Okay. Um, someone move to, um, how do you want it said, Cindy, to? Appoint Amy LaValle as a substitute, substitute library member. associate. Effective immediately. Yes. Is there a second? First of all, some a trustee's actually got to make that motion. Just say so moved. Oh. Some so moved. So moved. Okay. So now, is there a second? I'll a second. second. Okay. Oh, <laughs> it's been moved and seconded to appoint Amy as a, a substitute librarian. Is there any discussion? There, wh why do we need to do that? That's how that it mean? works. Huh? That's how it's supposed to go. I. I say this is the person I want to hire, but then the board has to vote to say yes, this is we're okay with that, and then let the town know that it's okay that this person was hired or appointed and can be paid and can be paid. Yes, Cindy, uh, maybe uh, there... what the question is: Is there a need for that? And if so, what does it commit us to, if Good. anything? Or is it well? Terrible? So what it would be is Amy would be a substitute. So say like. This week when I was on vacation, if Carol or Kim weren't able to fill in any of the hours, if Amy was available, she would go in and fill in the hours or say, 
next month Kim is going away on vacation. If Carol wasn't able to, and I weren't able to cover all of the hours for Kim's shifts, then Amy as a substitute would just come in and fill in as we need her where we would need her to cover a shift. I see. So it's so not it's like that having... I'm bringing in a third person and having the job be three people. It's Amy's just going to be used when we need her, where we need her. Okay. So there are no actual extra hours. It is just no, filling it's in. Just... So there's not a hole or you're looking for someone and we are out someone to be at the library. Yes. Okay. And I, I, I really just, uh, none of you was on the board when uh, COVID struck and we ended up with a librarian with COVID an associate with COVID and liter literally we were trying to figure out how to do everything that had to be done. So if there are three subs um, and I mean, you only hire, use one at a time, I think that's a, a good thing. And in answer to your question, Fred, Cindy is their immediate supervisor and we are hers. Therefore, when she recommends to us the hiring of an individual, we have to approve it. Just as we would if we were hiring a, a library associate or another librarian or another custodian, we would have to approve it. That's part of our, our gig. Okay. Well, it sounds like a good idea, like having an extra player on the bench if you yep. need him. Yes. I think so. Yeah. Okay. Right. Is there any other discussion or questions or... Okay, if not, we'll proceed to a vote. George? Yes. Ginger? Yes. Bob? Yes. Deborah? Yes. Fred? Yes. Okay, Cindy, keep on rolling. Okay, that's all I have, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. July circulation numbers sure look good. Yeah. Don't they? Yeah, I mean, uh, have we broken a thousand? Not since that September a couple of years ago. Okay. So we're getting close. We're getting That's close, though. That's nice. Does anybody have any questions on Cindy's report? Uh, kind of uh, not so much this report, but I guess maybe going back a little to the minutes of last meeting, Cindy was supposed to send the rest of the trustees a copy of the survey results. I never saw that. Did anybody else see that? I, everybody else saw that? I'll resend it. I, I think Deborah said she didn't see it. I don't know if George said he didn't see no. it either. No, I don't have it. I, don't, I I forgot all about that. I will resend them again after this meeting. Okay. Now, can I just ask you, speaking of resending, did you all get last month's minutes from Cindy earlier this week, or did you get them today from me when I forwarded them? Today from you. Today. But what the heck happened? Cindy, there, there is an issue that you need to figure out uh, um, with why when you send stuff on CW Mars, it doesn't come to us. Because I, it, that's the second month in a row yeah. that we didn't get minutes. I, so you got you to gotta look into that and figure it out. Okay. Wait, I, I'm so sorry about that. I have no, no, no idea. If it's because I was doing them from home and sending them from my laptop, but that shouldn't make a difference. No, no. not if you were in that account. No. For your, for well, your I, I'm, I am so sorry. I have no idea oh. what's going on. Okay. Just check it's it out. It's in the matrix somewhere. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Old business. Strategic plan update. Could hear from um, anyone. Well, George, Deborah, and I sat down and reviewed the rough draft that I came up with. They offered some suggestions and edits. So before I left, I was sort of picking away at it. And then when I go back, I'm going to um, pick away at it some more so that I have the cleaner rough draft that George and Deborah um, suggested I go with. Okay. And, and, um, Deborah sent sent that link, which you're probably well familiar with, about what's supposed to be in it. And yes. are, are we making a checklist and checking it twice, making sure that we're not naughty but nice? Yes. And covering <laughs> it all. Okay. So it's really important that we do that. Just so that it doesn't get kicked back to us and we ended up, you know, having to spend the holiday season fixing it, right? Right. Okay. Anything Did you have do you have a do you have a, a rough idea of when you would be getting Deborah and me a second draft? 
Um, I'm hoping to get it to you by next Wednesday. My plan is to go in on Saturday and chip away at it some more. Okay, great. Yeah, and make sure you start with the other the two members that are your helpers before you send it in the blast email. Let yes. you you three have the feedback together before um it comes to us. Okay. Does is that uh, accurate, Deborah? Yes, yes it is. absolutely. Okay. All right. Um Bob, brick repair and ceiling project update. Uh done. 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 So did they they managed to separate the bills, Cindy? Yes, they did. And then I Perfect. realized that because one of them is over the two thousand dollar limit, you need to sign it before I can submit it. Oh, okay. Um mm, tomorrow's Thursday, you're not there. Saturday? Um, yeah. I'm, my life is complicated by the fact that I'm working for Sanderson and that's all weather related. And when we start is all up to Alan each and every day. So I Even never Saturday? Know. And Sunday. Yeah. It's called farming. Well, that's yeah. true. Farmers, they don't get, ever get a day off. There, there is no such thing as Sunday. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah. I will definitely try. I will definitely right, try. Well, I, can call, I can call you when I get to the library to let you know I'm there. Okay, and if I'm not on my tractor, I'll be able to do something. And if all else fails, I can just drop it off in your mailbox. Okay. 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 We'll we'll figure it out. We'll get it. Started. We'll figure it out. Okay. All right. And update on due to room floor repair. We have yep. news. Back to the back to the ceiling. Oh, it's yeah. all soaked in. You you don't even see it. I think the I think the tint has changed a little bit on the bricks. Not much. But if you run your fingers across it, you can feel a, it's not waxy, but it's, you can feel it on the bricks. It's interesting. So update on the Duda floor. Um, I emailed, I think I emailed that to you, Bob, and I probably should have emailed that out to everybody. Should I send it out to everybody real quick? Yeah. Okay. There I it did. is. Um, where did it go? Okay, uh, forward. All of a sudden my computer's going super slow here. Um, we have an, we have an estimate, um, back to do the work bob maybe you can tell them i'm having a hard time talking and chewing gum yeah, at the I'm, same time. I'm, I'm trying to find the email but I'm, um... is that the one where they're asked where they gave the amount of that the library is supposed to cover yes yeah you have that real quick no i don't think i ever got it Hang on. Hold on. It's going to be coming out. Okay. This is the moisture prep. Yeah. Um, allied flooring. Okay. So I have it. Do you want me to forward it to everybody? I think I just sent it. Okay. If, if my computer's cooperating. I'm watching myself on the TV and it's a little sluggish. Or at least. On I, the just, I just got it. Okay. okay. Good. Good. So if you look at that, you see um, the amount. It is, let me get it back open again here. 2,156.62. Right. That goes back to when I, to explain to everybody who, who hasn't been along for the ride on this, um, The way I prefaced everything when dealing with Allied was they we considered them the experts when they installed the floor three or four years ago. And considering that we had a water event that caused us to lose the carpeting, maybe they should have considered putting water penetrating something that would stop the water in there. If mm -hmm. they would have, 
we would have paid for that as part of the previous floor install. Right. So what we asked them to do was tear the floor out, put a new floor in with whatever treatment they should have done previously. We would pay for that treatment, but we expected them to pay for the removal and the installation of the new floor. Our part of that is the $2,156 minus the sales tax, obviously, because we don't pay sales tax, but that's, that's our part of this new install. We will get a new floor. I asked Donna, I told her we were going to vote on it tonight. Um, I asked her if we voted yes, could they have the new floor installed by the end of October, which hopefully should give us enough time before the weekend after Thanksgiving for the holiday party. Uh, and she said, yes, that shouldn't be a problem. Okay. So I, I think we should do it. I think it should have been done previously. Um, we're going to get a brand new floor and I don't, I don't know what else to do. If we put another floor down with the water that's now coming through there, we're just going to have more problems. So we got to do something. Okay. Um, can I have a motion for, um, uh, uh, well, first of all, I guess in order to discuss this, we should have, we should have it on the floor, um, to accept the, the, um, proposal from Ally for 2088.58. That's the figure without the tax. Okay. And then once we get that, we can determine where it's going to come from and we can discuss if you have, you know, issues with that. Would someone like to make a motion to accept the bid for 2088.58 from Allied Floor? I make a motion that we accept the bid for 2088.58 from Allied Floor. Is there a second? I second the motion. Okay, now we have discussion. Okay. So Bob, can you sorry, can you explain what um what water event uh, originally uh, ruined the, the rug and what water events in the future, you sound like you're expecting water events. And is well, that accurate? There was a, there was a, pardon the pun, a confluence of uh, things which occurred, I think it was two summers ago. Number one, uh, our gutters on the roof of the rotunda were a little bit plugged, not a little bit plugged, plugged. Um, water ran down the side of the building. Um, I guess you'd, it would be the Southeast side of the rotunda and it went through to the basement on the inside and ruined the carpet um and we had to get that taken care of we obviously had to get the carpet out of there right away which we, we we hired somebody right to suck up the water but then of course we have you know worries about mold and stuff so we decided to move toward doing the floor perhaps it was three summers ago i can't remember but it was during that really really rainy summer and uh, so um, we now have Keith uh, making inspections of our gutter system with his snorkel truck um, every year so that we try to avoid the kind of buildup we had. The, there was so much organic, decomposed organic matter in the downpipes that they just, it simply bubbled over and then just ran down the side of the building. Um, so that's the history of why we went to the to the floor and not carpet and we thought we had it solved um but the problem is that there there seems to still be water that has somehow penetrated the what's underneath there and we need to seal it out of there they they think allied thinks it's coming up through the water table they think it's coming up from below and mike okay. they they asked have new houses been built and I said, on that road, I don't think there's been a new house for a long time, <laughs> a few decades, at least longer than I've been in town. Um, I don't know. I think it's raining more. Um, this, if, if we, so we had the event that Bob's talking about, and then there must've been something else that happened. When did it bubble up before last fall? I think. Before right. we Which, did and last last summer was an incredibly rainy summer, oh. if you remember. I mean, people's crops were destroyed inches and inches of rain. We had like 19 inches of rain in five days at, at one point in July. So I think that the, the water table responded 
and as it rises water percolates to the surface and it came again so that it it uh on the the click lock floor it just where there were um seams budding it just kind of raises them up and you can glue them back down but then they'll appear somewhere else and it'll be a continual process so um it has to be removed it has to be sealed and um thankfully uh, allied's going to replace the floor does I, allied believe that um that what they're going to do with this this extra stuff will solve the problem or just um, uh, make it a little less problematic. I mean, we're going to have a if it's the water table, that's a and and we're going to have rain issues all the time. So, so two things two things about that. Allied will stand behind if we spend this money. Allied will stand behind their product and warranty this new floor. And I don't know exactly what their warranty is on the product we picked, but we will have the factory and the installation warranty from them. Uh, second point, I talked to J.D. Ross, uh, who's a contractor, Jim's son, and I said, is this really going to work? And he's, his comment was, yes, that's what you need to do. Um, I'm a I was a little concerned before I talked to him because you have the thickness of the concrete, and then we have the non-permeable coating going on our side of the thickness of the concrete. So there's water getting up to that coating. And his comment, JD's comment, was that's what you have to do. He's used a similar product in the past, and it works. So his comment was, yeah, that sounds like a that sounds like the price is about where it needs to be. And this is what you want to do. This is what you need to do to solve the problem. Not to say that 20, 30 years from now we won't have a problem. <clears throat> Nobody's going to go out that far and guarantee it, but for the the near and midterm. Um yeah. Thank you. George, I think when you're dealing with water. Uh, yeah. it it does what it wants to do. Yeah, uh, and I, I guess maybe I'll just have to call some of my Dutch friends and get some ideas from them because they're really <laughs> good with water. They have big fingers. Yeah, yeah. So is is there? Are they going to apply a, a glue to before they put the tile back on, or is the glue on the back of the tile already, and they're just going to put it on the surface? They're going to trowel down. What are they? What is it? They have they a, seal it. a skim coat and a vapor barrier primer that right. they are going, they're going to mix up and they're going to apply that to our floor. To the right. concrete, but then, right? But then when you put the new flooring on, how is the new flooring going to adhere to that? Yeah. Are they putting glue on it? They are... I don't know how they're attaching the floor. I didn't ask that. I didn't ask whether it's a floating floor or whether they're gluing it. It's click lock, I, isn't it? Isn't it click lock floor? I don't know. I but thought this, is, this is where, Fred, this is where I go back to them and I said, you guys are, you guys told us you were the flooring experts. Yeah. You, you are the flooring experts, right? So, we need to count on we need to count on you guys knowing what you're doing and warranting what you've done. Yeah. But the, the flooring that's there now, did yeah. they put a did they put a, a glue or adhesive on on the concrete and then put the flooring on top? Or did the flooring come with an adhesive to the back of it and they just laid the flooring out and said, okay, it's it's glued down. The current if we're doing flooring, the same thing, it's going to come yeah, up I, again, won't it? Not if water doesn't get through to the, if there is adhesive, not if the, my assumption would be if that's how they're going to do it, if that's what they recommend and they stand behind, if they feel that an adhesive is going to work because the water won't get through their barrier coat. Okay. Is, may I ask one question? If Absolutely. they are putting the barrier coat down to basically it's waterproofing, 
then they put the wood on top. If for some reason the barrier is broken and they are guaranteeing it, then they would have to replace the wood floor again. Is that not right? At least that, within a certain amount of time. That's my understanding. And I'm okay. willing. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Donna okay. was not Donna was not happy with me. She was not happy with this deal, but she's willing to stand behind their work and their product and yeah. well thank you bob for for making the deal and and sticking out for it i think this I, is the best folks i think this is the best deal we're going to get from them i and think I it's think great it's they're eating a lot of labor <laughs> and yeah. the factory's eating the materials right yeah. right yeah i think it's the be best we can do yeah okay is there any further discussion any other questions if not, we'll proceed to a vote on, oh, uh, maybe we should um, decide where we're gonna take it from. My vote is state aid. Cindy, we're good there, right? Yes. Because we like started state out with like 13,000 and we're spending some state aid for the um, brickwork, but we just ameliorated that with 750 other dollars tonight. And so we'll be, probably around 8,000 after all is said and done. Probably. With a new floor, fixed bricks, sealed bricks, painted windows. I don't know. I think that's probably a pretty good deal. So my suggestion would be to take it out of state aid if if you also agree. Sounds okay. right. So, so we will take this out of, if we uh, vote for it, we will take it out of state aid, Cindy. All right. Okay, so, but you're not voting for it tonight, are you? Yes. If oh, you are motion on the floor to okay. accept the vote and pay for it. Um, well, we're not gonna, you don't have to pay for it until they actually do it and bill us, right? Right, okay. We're not gonna, well, right. Waitley won't pay ahead of time, anyways. No. Okay, so we're gonna proceed to a vote. So we're going to take out of state aid 2088.58 to pay for the um, uh, quote from Allied Flooring. Okay, uh, George, yes, Ginger. Yes. Deborah. Yes. Bob. Yes. Fred. Yes. And I vote yes. Okay. Uh, painting project, Bob. Um, okay, so painting, I talked with Bob Holla earlier this week. Um, again, to bring everybody up to speed on the painting project, once the bricks were done and sealed, repaired and sealed, then my thinking was um, paint the exterior, anything white that needed it, and fix the um, the downspouts and the gutters because they were leaking in the corners. Um, that has gotten complicated. There are sections where the downspouts seem to be and the gutters seem to be doing okay, and on the wings, on the I guess the north and south wing, um, the backing looks good. And Bob's comment was, I don't think you need to paint it. And I don't think you need to touch the gutters. There is some work that needs to be done on the center part on the pitch roof where the downspouts come through the outside of the building. They're, they're sort of integrated into the architecture of the building. Um, as part of all this with the downspouts and Bob is going to talk to, sorry, going back to the painting, Bob is going to talk, he's busy and doesn't have time. He's going to talk to some friends of his who are painters. He can help them. Uh, he will get back in touch with me, but right now we do not have an estimate. We do not have anybody lined up. So I'm hoping to talk to him probably the beginning of next week and see where he's gotten and begin to get some numbers and circulate those to everybody. Right now, the gutters, they had to pull the downspouts away from the building to be able to spray. Everything is secured. It's not as clean an uh, installation as it could be in spots, but nothing's going to fall off the building. Nothing's going to fall off in the wind. Everything works. Um, the other part of this project is the downspouts. So I'll get updates on the painting. The other part is the downspouts and the gutters. 
I went down and talked to Keith Bardwell about how much work is it when they have to come out and pull everything out of the gutters? Um, and would it be a help if we got gutter guard or gutter helmet? I forget what it is. Larry Ashman had strongly suggested that we look into that around the library. And that's when um, the guy was in town and gave us an estimate for $1,500. I'm starting to have second thoughts about that. $1,500 is $1,500 that if we don't have to spend, we don't have to spend. Keith's comment was, listen, I got to go up to do the rotunda and the pieces that go through the architectural features of the building anyway. There's nothing that's going to protect those. And if you put the gutter guard, gutter helmet things on the other parts of it, well, that's great. That's a little bit less I have to do, but I still have to get a truck and at least one or two guys up there. It's really not that big a deal. So I think we put, I think we put any kind of gutter guard on hold. Um, I'm going to go down the next time it rains and see how much the gutters are leaking. I remember being down there earlier this year before the brickwork was done, because I also want to see how the bricks are shedding the rain. Um, some of the corners were really leaking and dripping on the building. So I, I'll get an idea and I'll be able to report back at next month's meeting on hopefully the painting and what I recommendations on what needs to be done with the gutters. You also had concerns about the fact that there's maple trees nearby and the, their helicopters sometimes can get be in the slots of the gutter guards and make even more of a problem than you had when you didn't have gutter guards on. Correct. Correct. So it's not as simple as just slapping something on top of the gutters. And then because and I don't have a lot of information, I have a very basic estimate from these gutter people. Um, is it maintenance free? Some of them you have to, every couple of years, you have to take them off and clean them out. Yeah, I I, I, can, I don't see how you can get away uh, without having to do that. So, I mean, all we're doing is like maybe skipping a year for Keith cleaning those. I, I, I agree with you that maybe we could put that on the back burner. And if it becomes something that obviously we need to do, um, we can look at it because we're, We've tackled a lot of projects in the past 16, 17 months, and we're, we're making really good progress on the building. We're doing our job as trustees. Um, so, and we, we now know that the roof can wait for till we um, can apply in the new year for exactly. um, CPC funding. And we know that um, Bob Holla doesn't think all of the trim needs to be painted. I, I, I suppose we're going to need to do something with the um, columns because those are chipping and so forth. And I, I guess the, you know, especially the front of the building, which has the most white on it, um, wouldn't, wouldn't hurt to throw a coat of paint on that, but yeah, w I think we can wait on those things. That's what I was thinking. And I was thinking maybe even if, if it doesn't work out, I could get down there and, and grab the pressure washer and JD's lift and, and get in there and, and see about just cleaning it up with a, a slight, you know, not a heavy duty pressure wash, but just go in there and clean up the front part of it and mm -hmm. see what that looks like. Okay. So, and um, I put down update on roof repair, Bob, and I basically uh, let the cat out of the bag. Yeah. Uh, so if you want to, you spoke with um, JD or roofing. I spoke with JD and the roofer and they said, yeah, it's just their intention was to let us know that it's, it's, looking like it needs to be repaired. Um, if funding doesn't allow to repair it this year, then push it out till next year, but they wouldn't let it go past next. They wouldn't, their comment was, I think you'll be okay this winter. I don't know about next winter. Okay, I will, I will, um, when the time comes, make the proper application to CPC um, and see what happens because that is not routine maintenance, I don't think. Okay. It's and gotta be what, a 20, 25 year roof? It's gotta be. Yeah. Okay. Is there any other old business that we have forgotten to go over? 
Okay, if not, we can look at, um, I, I put it on new business, prioritizing building repair projects. I think we just did that um, so far. Um, plans to meet the October strategic plan deadline. Cindy, are we on target? George, Deborah? Oh. Bob, yes. There was, there was one other thing, the holiday gathering. Yeah, that was, I was going to bring that oh, up. Oh, I skipped it. I skipped, skipped it. it. I'm sorry. Yeah. So yeah. I, I went and talked to Chip at uh, the Waitley Inn, and we are all set for that Sunday. I don't have the date in front of me, but whatever Sunday it is after December 1st, Thanksgiving, um, we are all set. We can get to him. He, I put it on my calendar when he said, stop in and let me know what you want. Um, we will have the new floor. I will make sure we have the new floor in by then. Um, <clears throat> And then it's I'm, I'm I'm happy to supply the coffee and the hot chocolate and all the other stuff. We still have we have a ton of stuff left over at the house here from other events that we've done. So, would you like to cater something at my house, Bob? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <clears throat> but okay. I think I think we have time. Um, I think we have lots of time as we get closer. Okay. Um, as far as setup and you know what we want to do and all that stuff. Okay, very good. All right, so now we're going back to. Um, did we get an answer there on plans to meet the October strategic plan deadline? I I noticed that uh, la the the last strategic budget I think was approved by the trustees uh, on September eighteenth. So is that something we should be aiming for? Uh, is that a is that a our next. Not when do Next we need to get it to the rest of the trustees, Bob? Um, well, Cindy, when do we need to submit the report? Well, Candace's went from July 1st to June 30th. Um, and so even though it was July 1st, it wasn't officially approved and accepted by the board until September. Right, but when do right. we need to submit it? Right. Um, I will double check with Oscar to get an actual date. Yeah, our, our next meeting it should be on the 11th of September. Um, but I I don't think you'll have it done by then. It should be sometime. I'm hoping it'll be done by sometime around then. Oh, okay. I, I don't see why we shouldn't be able to do it, but uh, okay. So so I, I will put it on the agenda. Um, if if we can get that in a few days in advance so that <clears throat> everyone has a chance to read it, and yeah. that might be one of the sole items on the agenda for September, because I do remember that it occupied a lot of our time last time. Deborah, how do you feel about that? And Cindy, how do you feel about that? Trying for that. Day. I think okay. we should absolutely try. I think it's contingent on when Cindy is going to get that to us. Yeah. I would like to get a sense of when it's actually due to the state. Um, so I'm, that... I'm going to double check with Oscar on that. Okay. So we know what the hard deadline is. Yes. And I suppose if we had to have a special meeting where we just dealt with that, all we need is to make sure we have 48 hours notice and that we can get a quorum. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. So we could do that if necessary. Okay. Everybody good on that? Sounds good. Right. Yeah. Now there's um, another item of new business which will be listed under other, and that is that we have had uh, consistent trouble alarms from the fire alarm system uh, for I don't know pretty much all summer, and um, supposedly uh, Verizon came and fixed the problem, but it reared its ugly head in the past I don't know week and a half I don't know two or three times a day starts about two 30 in the morning. Yep. You get calls from Chicago and it continues throughout the day. So Bob did some, did called our fire experts and this is what he found out. Um, I, everybody should have gotten that from me. Yes. From fire equipment. Sure. Um, yeah. I talked with JP Kennedy, the fire chief. Uh, he said they are using it that type of system they had similar problems at the fire department and they're using that type of wireless slash cellular system at the fire department 
they've had good luck with it. Um, what he asked, he asked that we do that. He asked that we use the same company that they use, um, the same equipment that they use, so we can start to get some continuity between buildings. And then he even suggested that there be continuity between call lists. And I said, well, I don't think I need to get called if the fire alarm goes off at the town office. And he said, no, no, no. He said, but I'd like to be on your call list and maybe Keith, something like that. And I think that would be appropriate. So it's not just an internal thing. Um, I, there doesn't seem to be a lot of answers on how to solve this. Other people have run have run into it. Um, I mentioned to JP that, you know, we're working on a budget like everybody else is in town. And he's, his comment was, I know you're still working on the pool stations. If you need to take money from the pool stations to do this, this is more important. So you know, I still can't quite figure out because uh, twice I went up there after the phone calls and the readout said system normal. I just I, I, I don't understand why we're getting a, a trouble something and it's always phone related. But yet when I went up there, it said system normal. So I'm thinking, what's okay. the Verizon? What's the Verizon system that we're on? The one that it, it's what allows it's what allows Cindy to dial an extension and get somebody in the town hall. It's not a phone. No, no. I I have to dial eight to get an outside line. I can't just pick up and like dial three to get Amy. Oh, really? I have to pick it up and dial as an outside call over to town offices, over to the fire department, over to the police department, over to Keith. Um, so it's not, we're not part of the same phone system. Like I have my own, we have our own Verizon bill that comes every month for the library for three lines, our regular line, the line for the fire monitoring and the line inside of the lift that allows people to call out in the event that they're stuck in the lift and it's an emergency. Okay. We will be able to get rid of one of those lines, the line that goes to the panel. Okay. Because it would be cellular. But there is, you see, there is, there's the one-time charge and then there's the annual recurring charge. Right, the four hundred eighty dollars. So yeah. once once we get this up and <clears throat> running, <clears throat> we're committed to spending four hundred eighty dollars over three hundred sixty five days, which to me doesn't seem like a lot of money to protect the library. So, so yeah, I agree. Yeah, make it a, a budget. Um, add it to next year's for FY twenty six's budget. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. You you should. Uh, um, I guess it would be. Uh, Fire control monitoring, right? Fire control. Well, we have fire monitor. Well, we have a line item now. Of fire monitoring that's a thousand dollars. But that 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 fire mo monitoring is for the um. Isn't lifts the lift? No, that's different. Or, or okay, so that that Verizon one thousand dollars is what we're paying for that line that we're no longer going to use after. No, this. no, no. The Verizon line. We have a line item for Verizon where the bill comes out of the line for Verizon. Okay. So so do we not use that fire monitoring thousand dollars? Yes, we do. Okay. And it goes to who? These guys every year we get a invoice that is sent to for some reason, it's sent to the town, and then Jessica forwards it to me to cover the cost of having the system for a year, like the annual fee for having it. Do you know is that, that the annual fee for it being monitored twenty four seven? That's probably yes. What it is, okay. Yes. And that's a thousand dollars a year. That's what's budgeted. That's what it's budgeted for because that's what it was recommend when. We were first getting it all put in. That's when Brian was town administrator. That's what he recommended that I put in as a budget for. 
example. Just to make yes. sure we had enough. So ultimately, the answer to your question is, yeah, you'll have to put in another line item um, for cellular fire monitoring um, connect fee. Okay, okay. folks. So what's in front of us is $700 to um, connect the um, our system to cellular and uh, annual uh, connect contract fee of $480. So it's $1,180 total. Um, we really should act on this. What's your pleasure? Hello. I, yes. I wish there was another way around it, but I'm not sure what we do. Verizon seems to be unresponsive. Cindy, you would know more or unable to fix whatever their problem is. He, the one time the Verizon technician came out, he, I guess he thought he had it fixed. Well, it worked. It worked for a while without um, trouble alarm. Could it be that the lines get saturated from all the rain because they're underground? I don't know. I it, I hope not. It shouldn't be. Shouldn't be. Well, what do you think? But they had similar problems at the fire department. It were, and I think it was either the town. The I don't know if it's the new town building or the old town hall. But we're going to be at least the second, if not the third town building to go on this type of system. So, I think clearly with JP's recommendation, right. you know, and um, we do have money set aside for those pull stations, we could swap it out. How much did we set aside for the pull stations? Does anybody remember? Like no, that was what was left in electrical. We were using what was left in electrical upgrades, the ARPA funds, electrical upgrades. So I think there's about one thousand two hundred and forty dollars left in that, in those funds. One thousand two hundred forty dollars in those funds. That eleven $1 hundred eighty fits right in there. I'm pulling up the estimate from Well Design right now. I thought that the balance in the electrical for. Uh, budget was like nine ninety five or something. It wasn't more than a thousand dollars because there was another item in there that we paid two hundred and forty dollars for, for the back door, uh, the exit yeah. sign, and and a yeah. and, and electric work. So yeah. no, that came out of the fire door replacement. No, it shouldn't have. I I'm, I saw the bill. It came from the electrical project. There's nine hundred ninety five dollars and some change left. There was left in the electrical budget. <clears throat> okay, we're gonna, <clears throat> Cindy. We'll have to get to the bottom of uh, what went where and. I'll, I'll have to wait till I'm back in the library and I can pull up last yeah. year's bill yes. schedules. Yes, of course, of course. Okay, what do you want to do about this bill or this proposal? We really, we really should act on it. I think we, I move that we, and maybe this is too soon to say these words, but I think we should do, I think we should move on it instead of the pool stations. And that if is, we had money great. set aside for the pool stations, um, that estimate was $1,846. All right. And we didn't we vote to take that from somewhere? Yeah, a thousand was from electrical budget, and the other eight hundred was—I uh, don't remember what it was from maintenance, maybe or something. Okay. All right. So, um, is that language uh, good enough for you that Bob's proposing to just at, for the time being until we get this financial thing figured out as to what went where? We're just going to take the money that we originally had earmarked for the pull stations and use part of it, um, $1,180, to do this um, immediate repair to the control system. Are we good That's on that? Good. Yes. Yes. Is, yes. There a is there a second to Bob's motion? Yes. Okay. Second. 
Is there any discussion? Does this um, obviate the need for that $1,000 Verizon thing for that Cindy referenced? Um, does that then, what I'm, happens to that? No, I I'm think- I'm gonna look into that okay. because even if, I don't think it's a Verizon, and and I think we need clarification on what exactly that is, because even if it, I pay fifty seven bucks a quarter, fifty eight bucks a quarter, for my home monitoring. So a thousand a year. I'm happy to look into that and try to understand what Brian was thinking and work with Cindy. And maybe make that part of the work that I'm doing with Jim, and that might help get him moving with me um, to try to understand what what that was, what the intention of that was, what it really is. Um, something's something's weird. Something doesn't sound yeah. right. It seems like we're paying for monitoring twice. Yes, we'll have to yeah. figure that out. Bob, would it would it help finding out more of, of what we pay at the town hall, the town hall building, what the expenses I'll, are? I'll do that either through JP or through the folks at the town hall, um, somebody, because if it's whoever else, I'll I'll go back and talk to JP and find out who else now that we're coming on board, because I'm gonna have to interface with him anyway to get all the call the call lists updated. Mm -hmm or at least our call list. Um, right. Cause apparently there was, there, I was talking to Keith and apparently the phones, his phone blew up over the weekend because of something down at the town offices on Sandy lane. So I, but I'm going to have to deal with everybody anyway, as this gets installed, I'm happy to do that. And as I'm doing that, I'll dig deeper into right. what is all this. Okay. So is it, is it, wise for us to move forward with this i i'm i yes i think so i think it is because then moving forward with this unlocks a lot of the conversations right that i that will help figure out where this other money is i i i'm, I'm happy to make the, the investigation of the thousand dollars another line item okay thank you next month's meeting all right Okay, folks, so it's been moved and seconded. Um, and if there's no further discussion, we're voting to replace spending that money that we had earmarked for pull stations to do the cellular upgrade of our um, monitoring system. All right, those, um, George, we're gonna do a roll call again. Okay, yes. Ginger. Yes. Bob. Yes. Deborah. Yes. Fred. Yes. And I vote yes. You guys didn't know that we we're going to spend all of our time talking about all these <laughs> crazy financial things about the building but that i mean we are entrusted with the building and we're almost done we're, we're very almost close done. to hopefully yes okay uh, so folks is there any other new business that has occurred since i published the agenda i have i have two items i like to bring up okay uh one is, I think it was at the last meeting, Cindy mentioned that somebody was was in our in the library looking at the handicap ramps, the accessibility and uh, and and whatever. And she forwarded us forwarded uh, the trustees a copy of their concerns. Uh, looking at what their what their concern was, and I was just there today. Uh, I think the the major concern was the the ramp uh, as you get up by the building itself. There's no hand railing at all, either on the building or between them two white columns. If you're on that ramp between the two white columns and your wheelchair falls off the edge, you're going down the stairs all the way to the grass. There's nothing to hold on between the two white columns. I think that was her concern. As you get closer to the door, you've got the railing for the steps that comes out to, to hold on to if you need to, and you're close enough to the door to, to get in through the door. I think, you know, that's something we need to look at. It's it's going to be a liability issue if somebody's on that ramp and falls off because they can't hold on to anything. 
You either put a railing between the two white columns, similar to what you got on the steps from what Blake, Gorey, or you put one on a building for somebody to hold on to if they're falling off. Uh, I guess I would encourage the other trustees when you're there this this uh, next month to look at that and see what you think. If somebody goes off that edge, you're you're gone. You're you're down on the grass. I think it's a liability issue. It, it shouldn't cost that much to put the railing a railing between the two columns. I don't know what we pay for the railing for the steps, but uh, I don't know, $1,000 maybe, I don't know. Uh, I think that's something we should look at. Okay, the, the other other item, I guess concerns me some, and I was there today in the building and there's, there's uh, I don't know what the mini splits are set for, for cooling the building down. I was in the basement. There's two thermometers on the bookcases that I think they both said 69 degrees and the humidity was 57%. Uh, I saw Matt earlier, earlier today and he was concerned that the humidity in that room is, is so high that it's, it's ruining the bindings on the, the books that are on the shelves. I looked at the, at the books on the shelves. The bindings are falling off. They're deteriorating. I don't know if it's humidity related or it's just old age or whatever. Uh, there was a dehumidifier running on the floor. Uh, I don't know if it was full or empty. I didn't, I didn't bother touching it. There's also two different, I noticed two different dehumidifier units, uh, portable ones, they're on wheels in the back storage room. Uh, I guess my, my question is, 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 do we know what temperature should be in the, in the building and what should be humidity levels to protect our archives in that building? Uh, the people there, who I always saw at the front desk, I don't remember her name exactly, she was with a sweater on because it was cold in the building. 69 degrees. I don't keep my own house at 69 degrees, uh, summer or winter even. Uh, I, I think that's a concern. Uh, if the mini splits don't work, which I've been bringing up, uh, don't work efficiently, we need to look at replacing them to get more efficient ones that take out the humidity because they're not doing that if you need the units on a portable units on the floor. And I guess my concern is, or question maybe is, is to find out what should be the minimum temperature and humidity level in a library. What do people set their their heating and AC on? I guess call other libraries to find out what they have set on. Not the sixty nine degrees. I I think that's to me that's too low. Now unless somebody can explain to me that that's that's what the state requires for libraries or everybody else is doing that temperature, fine, uh, I, I guess, but I guess that concerns me that we're, we're not protecting our, our archives in the building. Comments, anyone? Fred, I will put the, I will, I'll ask uh, the trustees to, uh, in their own time between now and September 11th to take a look at the ramp yeah. um, so that they can, you know, see it, visualize it, and right. then discuss what we should do about it at the, I'll put it on the September agenda. And then Cindy, when you get back to work, one more thing for you to do, call some libraries and find out. I know I asked you before and you, you called somebody on the state level about the temperature in the library. And I can't remember um, do you remember this was like maybe during the winter I asked about that? Um, yes. Anyway, yes. So, um, could you do a little bit of research to find out, uh, optimal humidity level? Obviously 50 something percent is probably not optimal. Right. And I, I, so maybe we should be running the dehumidifiers downstairs. 
I mean, the downstairs why. would be the biggest problem, would be downstairs. Yeah. And humidity, really bad humidity, is bad for books anywhere. Right. You know, there, there probably is a, there is a, a website that talks about environmental conditions in state and public buildings, because that's what I looked at when we were installing the, uh, the uh, water heaters in the bathrooms. And what was the minimum temperature there was, I think, like 140 degrees is what they say you should have as the temperature. So there are there are state uh, regulations or guidelines or whatever you want to call it on public buildings, what there should be, the environment in the building. Yeah, Bob. Going back to, I don't want to drag up the flooring again, but maybe once we seal the floor in the basement, not as much moisture will come through the concrete. I don't know. We're going to, that would maybe a wait and see. I don't know that we do anything drastic this year. We're almost through the summer cooling season. Um, <clears throat> but if we seal that and all of a sudden find that the humidity drops, that may be part of the answer, Fred. Well, it could, could be. I think well, we I, still want to know. I think the I'm temperature. Sorry, sorry Ginger. I, still I think we still want to know what the recommended settings are: temperature and humidity. Right. Um, especially because some of the books in the basement are one of a kind. Right. And and some of them that are in in deteriorating condition, I don't know if there's some some uh, company or group that uh, cleans them. If they got mold on them, we can't always see the mold, but cleaning the mold to preserve the buildings, is, is there some okay. company that does that? Again, uh, I, I don't, I don't want to go too far out in the weeds here. Yeah, we, we need to examine this, and the first step is to find out what the guidelines and regulations are and what other libraries are doing. That will help inform us. We're right. about to do something to the floor, so that might change things. We have a dehumidifier going down there now. Um, do we have extra dehumidifiers that are not being used? I think I think there are two in the janitor's closet in the. Um, so part if of it seems to be a lot, we could pull another one out and and you know have yeah. it work, which could help. You know, okay. in the meantime. Okay. Well, Bob, you around tomorrow? You want to go down there tomorrow morning before I get on my tractor? Sure. What time? I'll meet you down there. I don't know. Eight o'clock? You got it. All right. We'll check it out. Um, and then um, I'll put that on the agenda. Would everybody take a look at the ramp? Mm -hmm. uh, and then, uh, Cindy, make sure that if... Uh, as soon as you find out, let me know what those temperatures are. If you could just send me an email that has a, a bunch of stuff on it from other libraries and whatever. Sure. Most of the, the, most of the temperatures for the circulation, uh, the rotunda area, the adult stacks room and the children's room, those are set at 72. Matt requested that his, the mini split in the janitor's closet be turned down because it was causing, I don't, he was having an issue with it. The one in the community room was at, I believe, about 72. It might have gotten turned up a bit. Um, I keep the one in my office at about 65 just because I like to be cold when it's hot. Okay, so you if you said that one of them was was turned up a bit by whom? I turned it up. Oh. Okay. All right. Well, um, Bob and I will take a look tomorrow morning. Bob, just text me. Otherwise, I'll see you there at eight. If he calls you early, I'm up by five five fifteen most mornings so well he's not he's yeah we're not going to go out at eight o'clock um because there's always dew and, and fog to worry about you can't harvest it wet so okay go. um fred uh, that is what will our plan of attack will be between now and september 11th okay 
Okay, it sounds good. Okay, uh, and September 11th would be the next meeting. Um, and I am entering into my fall season and my cross country meets are on Tuesdays, but if there's a thunderstorm, they would be moved to the next playable date, which could be the 11th, in which case, have fun. You'll have the agenda and you can run with it. Um, yes, you can. I, I just realized something. I am not here on September 11th. So if the strategic plan is going to be under discussion, we're going to need another night. Okay. So we'll, well, we'll, we'll see because you've got um, under a month there and you three can decide on how close we're going to be to launch. And Cindy's going to have a, a drop dead date for that. Okay. Okay. Well, right. there's one, one other item, Bob, you sent us something that Peter sent on the, Oh. Tell them what employee handbook? The yeah. personnel policy. It's the personnel policy. And I really, I'm so sorry. I, I know it's 84 pages long. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but P Peter, Peter asked me um, if we would just, uh, there are a couple of uh, departments that are um, sort of have a different structure. And ours is one of them because we have a board of trustees. Um, I think in the, for the sake of equity, um, among all the employees of the town that we should accept the policy that was accepted by the select board from the personnel subcommittee. Um, and I don't know if you read it, but it is really extensive and it goes yes. into all yeah. kinds of, of um, uh, you know, behavior, uh, um, yes. conduct, uh, reporting things. Mm -hmm. um, it's, I mean, it really is very, very detailed. And I didn't, nothing, seem to stand out to me as being, oh no, we can't do that. Uh, and I think that the select board has said yes. And so most town employees are covered by it. I, th I think it's incumbent upon us to um, to agree to accept it as the town's mm -hmm. personnel policy. What are can your I, opinions? Can I ask a question? Yes. When it talks about their personnel policy, like number of hours people work and how they work and how they can paid leave and sick leave. I mean, do all of that that has to do with personnel that works at the library, is it identical to what the town is or not? Or do that's the only thing that I mean I, I wondered about because that is something that we 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 hire and do that and the town does not with the library so how do we stand with that if we look back at our policies and they're not the same as that of the personnel of hiring firing and vacation and all that is it the same i mean i have no idea that's the only question i get yes it is it is the same yes it's okay same. i just yeah. think you know if we're going to sign off and it's great that we know what we're signing off on. Because <laughs> yeah. I, I, I mean, agree. I scan through all the 80 what pages, but it, it's a lot. It is so a lot. So I just, you know, not knowing and being new, I, you know, I trust everyone else on the board, but, you know, I wanted to at least bring that part up because I, I don't know. <clears throat> well, the, 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 uh, the document itself is a product of, obviously it's, it's um, boilerplated from somewhere. Um, yeah. But, this personnel subcommittee agreed to it and the personnel subcommittee has representation from kind of across the board um okay. no pun intended and uh <laughs> the select board voted to accept that policy so i i i can't see a reason not to um, okay okay the only concern well one concern i i, I had uh pertains to, to the trustees. The other is because since I'm salaried from the town, it's it's a little different. But the the email, the official emails, it, it talks about uh and I think a lot of it pertains to if you have a town email account with a whitely.org address on it, that that is all official email and anybody can request to see that email that, that you you send either receive or or send to to that address and it goes on further to say if you use your own 
email, your own, it calls it handheld or, or, or technology device to access official email, you are also susceptible to all the rules and regulations governing that public email. So if it ever came down to a, a, an issue, uh, I don't know, criminal or emergency or whatever, and, and you responded to Peter's email, since he uses the official email address, your email is all susceptible to, to inspection because you accessed a public email site. Yeah, now, I think we, we all have our own emails here. I was on the town one for a while, prior positions where I was with the select board and, and you kind of had to have a town email site, but I'm off of that now. Uh, and I don't know if that's a concern to anybody else. If that would ever, ever happen where you would get in a situation where they would call up all your emails and wanted to see what you've sent to that town address, town email address. I don't know. Well, <clears throat> I can only tell you that um, when I, uh, on my Frontier Teachers uh, email account, um, we are constantly reminded that <clears throat> whatever you send in that, on that email account, imagine it on the front page of the Greenfield Recorder. Right. And, <laughs> and that just guides you, that guides you um, to make sure that you, it's a thoughtful thing. And that's why I have cautioned several trustees over my time on the board um, that we don't conduct business via email. We send information. We send information about meetings, send agendas, um, right. but we conduct business. We don't take votes. We don't um, do, do things like that um, via email um, because that, I just think open meeting law is there for a reason. So Fred, I don't know. I mean, you know, if 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 you're caught in some sort of criminal case or whatever, I think your emails are going to get um toasted by somebody anyway. <laughs> I just, you know, it's it's like um people that I know that don't want to do any online banking or anything like that because they want to keep their their um um their magnetic ink away from uh, prying eyes. And I just like have to laugh because, you know, all I have to do is, is Google um, mousetrap. And for the next week and a half, every one of my social media things is going to offer me mousetraps. So, yeah. you know, the idea of, of this uh, privacy stuff, I just no, it, it you gotta, be, you gotta be cautious. You have to be cautious. And when you're doing um, emailing town addresses, waitley.org, addresses do it with a business business in mind okay good advice yeah okay i, I just i was maybe surprised that they had that statement in there that anytime you access it you're liable because up till now that wasn't public information i guess to every employee so okay so uh, can we take a vote on on supporting it? Are yes. you comfortable with that? Yes. Would somebody would somebody move to um, uh, that the library uh, agrees to the uh, personnel policy as voted by the select board? I move that the library agrees to uh, conform to the personnel standards and accept it at the select board issue. Second. second. Okay. Any further discussion, Bob? No, I was just going to second. Right. Okay, Fred, vote? Yes. Deborah? Yes. Ginger? Yes. Bob? Yes. George? Yes. And I vote yes. Okay, so now I think without further ado, it's time to adjourn. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, need a motion to do so? Motion to no. adjourn. Is there a second? Second. A second. Is there any opposition to adjourning? <laughs> Good night, everyone. See you on September. Good night. Thank you. Okay, Good we'll night. keep you posted if we find out information regarding any of these things that we've been asked to look up or whatever. We'll keep you posted with information so, in a special manner. Great. We may have a new date, though. Have what? Are we still is September 11th the date, or that may change? Um. 
the we'll we'll go with the regular meeting on September 11th. But if if the report is ready after that, we're going to have to find a time when Deborah is is also going to be available. So we could we could yeah. call another meeting with that as our only agenda item. And I would let you know, um, take a poll on possible dates, and then let you know which one we selected, and then post the meeting. Okay. Okay. Great. All right. Thank you. Okay, folks. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.